welcome back to Pronunciation with Emma. In today's video, we're going to talk about 10 winter and Christmas related phrasal verbs. Before I get started with the list, I'd just like to very quickly announce that the doors for the Pronunciation Pro membership site are open. If you're interested in improving your pronunciation and listening skills, and you're serious about it, you'd like daily feedback, a one-to-one -one session with me every single month, and access to over 60 lessons. I say 60, but I think at the time of this video going out, there will probably be over 70, and there will be more added in the future. So if you're serious about improving your listening and your pronunciation skills and you'd like more information on that, you'd like feedback every day, as I said, that's every day feedback and a one-to-one -one session every month with me, then there'll be more information in the link in the description below. As I said, the doors close really soon, so don't miss this opportunity because I keep opening and closing them because it is a membership site and I'm the only one who's made this. I'm the only one that's running it and I'm the only one that's giving people feedback. So when you get feedback, you aren't getting it from me. So if you're interested, as I said, link is below. But don't miss out if you are interested because I don't know when I will open the doors again. So the first phrasal verb, the first phrasal verb, that sounds re that's really hard to say. So the first phrasal verb is wrap up. Wrap up. That W, that W is silent. We don't pronounce it. R R. If you struggle with the R sound, I do have a video about it that I can help you with. I will link that down below in the description as well. But here we have wrap up, wrap up. Wrap up means exactly the same as wrap, like to cover something with some kind of paper or soft material, like what you do with presents. So you can wrap a present or you can wrap up a present. There's no difference in meaning. But wrap up tends to be used in more informal situations compared to wrap. So we can say, I'm going to wrap up everyone's Christmas presents this evening. I'm going to wrap up everyone's Christmas presents this evening. Or you can split it and you can say, I'm going to wrap everyone's Christmas presents up this evening. So you can split this phrasal verb. Phrasal verb number two is also wrap up. So as you are probably aware, we have phrasal verbs that can be used in many different contexts. And this one is exactly the same. So wrap up for the second definition I'm going to give you means to put warm clothes on. So to put a scarf on, hats, gloves, coats, layers, all of these things. This is to wrap up as well. However, unlike the first definition, we don't really say I'm going to wrap myself in clothes. You say I'm going to wrap up. So you can't use wrap in the same context here. Wrap only refers to covering something like a present in paper or some kind of soft material. But wrap up has two meanings. It can be like the first one I told you, or it can be to wear warm clothing. For example, it's important to wrap up well in winter. It's important to wrap up well in winter. To be snowed in, snowed in. This is when you have so much snow that falls that you just can't leave your house. You're stuck inside. What snowed in your house? You're stuck inside because of the snow. For example, we can't leave the house because we're snowed in. We can't leave the house because there's so much snow that we physically cannot exit the house. Number four is put up. Now you've probably seen put up a lot. It's one of those phrasal verbs where we just use put for like everything and especially put up. Here I want to talk specifically about decorations and your Christmas tree, which is something that we normally put up in the winter around Christmas time. So the act of putting up decorations means normally to hang decorations. It's to put the decorations around your house. It normally refers to the act of hanging them somehow though, not necessarily putting ornaments on surfaces, for example. When it comes to the tree, you can also put up the tree, which means to put the tree in your house and decorate it. For example, I usually put up my tree and decorations 12 days before Christmas. 
or you can separate this. I usually put my tree and decorations up 12 days before Christmas. Number five is the opposite. So if we put up decorations and put up the tree, the opposite is to take down the decorations and to take down the tree. So this is to remove the decorations and to take the tree and dispose of it somehow, remove it from your house. For example, I usually take down my tree and decorations after New Year, or I usually take my tree and decorations down after New Year. So you can separate this one as well. Number six is warm up. Again, you've probably seen this in lots of different contexts, like when you warm up for the gym, you get your body ready for the gym. But warm up in this context of this video, we're talking about making yourself feel warmer. So imagine it's very cold outside, you come inside and you sit by the radiator or the fire and you warm up, you warm yourself up. So you heat yourself. <laughs> So for example, we can say, I sit by the fire to warm up. I sit by the fire to warm up. If you want to talk about yourself or myself, for example, then you can say, I sit by the fire to warm myself up. You wouldn't normally and naturally say warm up myself. So this one you would have to separate it if you want to say someone like myself. Now we've looked at put up, let's have a look at put on. <laughs> Try not to get confused. So with this one, put on, we're talking about placing items of clothing on your body or it can be jewellery, accessories, etc. So remember that put up is to decorate your house with decorations. So you put up the decorations, but you put on clothes. Put up the tree, put on a jumper, for example. Now, you may already be familiar with this phrasal verb, so it may not be anything new, but I just wanted to include it because maybe you didn't know it and maybe you didn't know that it can be used together or it can be separated. Hi, future Emma here. This part might look a little bit different than the rest of the video. I try to be consistent, I put on the same jumper, <laughs> but I realized that I messed up the example here and I also completely skipped number eight. So this is just explaining that part, but the video will continue and go back to normal after this. So an example with put on, as in your clothing, you can say, don't forget to put on your gloves before going outside. Don't forget to put on your gloves before going outside. Or you can separate this. Don't forget to put your gloves on before going outside. Both are absolutely fine to use. And number eight, because for some strange reason I missed this one when I was first recording, is take off. So this is the opposite of put on. So I put on a jumper, but I take it off. I remove it. And as well, like put on, you can separate this. So could you take your boots off, please? Or could you take off your boots, please? Both are absolutely fine to use. You can keep them together or you can separate them. Back to past Emma normal video. <laughs> so number nine is sing along. Sing along, sing along. This means when you sing at the same time as another person or you sing to a piece of music that's playing. So normally at Christmas time, for example, people sing along to Christmas carols meaning that they sing together. So as another example, people sometimes listen to Christmas music and sing along. People sometimes listen to Christmas music and sing along. They sing at the same time. Number 10 and the last one is come down with something. Come down with something. So normally that something is a cold or the flu. So notice that I'm using the articles there as well. Come down with a cold or come down with the flu. We tend to use this when we're talking about contracting some kind of disease that's not very serious and is quite temporary. So that's why we normally use it to talk about a cold. So I came down with a cold. A cold normally isn't that serious. Of course, it depends on the person and their age, but we normally use this phrasal verb to talk about things that are not so serious. It's just a little disease where you're feeling a little bit under the weather, you're feeling a bit sick. So we use it, we use it normally in this kind of context rather than for very serious diseases and illnesses. So as an example, every winter I come down with a cold. Every winter, I come down with a cold, which means I get, I get a cold. <laughs> so don't confuse cold with feeling cold and 
a cold because a cold refers to when you get a little bit like a little bit sniffly, a little bit sick, a little bit ill. So don't confuse those as well because some people do get them confused. Even though it's the same word, they have different meanings. If you're talking about cold as an adjective, it's the feeling. But if you say, for example, I've come down with a cold, then you're talking about, you know, feeling a little bit ill, a little bit under the weather. And those are our 10 phrasal verbs for this video. I hope you have enjoyed this video and you found it useful. Please remember to check out the link below about the Pronunciation Pro membership site if you are interested in joining. It will close on the 3rd of January, so it closes very, very soon. And I think the doors will probably open again like Easter time, I'm not too sure. It depends, really. <laughs> I may open them a little bit sooner, but if you're interested and you're very serious about improving your pronunciation and listening skills then do consider joining at least check it out if you have any questions then just send me a message or comment below and I'll be very happy to help out with all that being said I hope you have a fantastic Christmas and a happy new year because it's almost the end of 2020 and I think many people are quite happy about that actually because 2020 has not been our finest year, has it? It's not been the best, but I hope that everyone who's watching this is well, and I genuinely do hope that you have some time to relax and enjoy Christmas and New Year as well. Thank you for watching and Merry Christmas. See you next lesson.